Hey guys, welcome back to After the Smoke Clears. This week, we got to interview a cool guy named Jim. And Jim has a 1961 Willis, or Willys, depending on how you say it. He has a cool wagon. And I'm telling you, it is awesome. You're not gonna wanna miss it, so stick around. So I got this car from my brother, Bob. Uh, it had sat in his garage for about 23 years. Uh, he was, I think, the second owner of this vehicle. He picked it up uh, when he was in his teens. I was, I believe I was in the Army when he got this. He drove it for a few years, uh, ended up getting married, having kids. The vehicle always needed love. Uh, his family took first place on that. This got parked, sat in his garage for about 25 years. It was always a conversation, an object of conversation, I should say. Whenever there was a Christmas party, whenever there was any party at his house, I'd always wander out to the garage and say, Bob, what are you gonna do with this vehicle? Are you gonna, are you gonna sell it? Are you gonna fix it up? Are you gonna give it to me? So it was some years later that uh, they had a flood. The, uh, his garage goes under grade and it had a sump pump in it that failed. Uh, it got wet. It, it, I think it about a foot and a half of water in his garage, so it filled up to the differentials. He opened everything up and drained all the water out, but soon after called me and said, if you're still interested in, in the wagon, come on over and get it. He gave it to me. That's where my story starts with this vehicle. I got a flat tow guy to pick it up for me, got it over here, and I think the same day I had the engine uh, out of the car. I began working on things that I, I my first, plan was to get it running and see how much time I actually wanted to put into this vehicle. Uh, when I pulled the engine out, I opened it up and found two cracked pistons and some pretty big gouges in the cylinder wall. So I knew that it was going to be a, a full engine restoration. At that point, I just pulled everything. I pulled the transmission, the transfer case, uh, you know, gutted the interior. In those days or weeks, I decided I'm gonna go with a full restoration of the vehicle because it had everything. I mean, there was basically no parts missing. It was, it was a survivor. Um, it had two coats of white paint on it. My brother had uh, painted it himself in my father's garage with that compressor, which uh, was willed to me several years ago. Uh, so it was, you know, it was a, you know, home paint job. Uh, it wasn't prepped like we would do it today. And, a lot of the paint was peeling off. So I brought it over to, uh, to a guy that we, uh, that I've had other cars uh, uh, soda blasted uh, from, Tom Stowe. He soda blasted the vehicle for me. I don't know, three days later he called me and says, you better come over here and see this. So I was like, uh oh, uh, problems? And he says, just come over and see it. So I went over to, to see the vehicle. He said, no rust. I'm like, oh. That's why he called me out here. He says, yeah, I can't believe there's no rust on this vehicle. He says there was a little dent right here, you know, from something that hit it over the years. Um, and uh, he said that this is a survivor. You know, he says, uh, you know, you need to really fully restore this thing. So we did. Uh, I did have Tom paint the car, and I did decide to use the original paint color. This vehicle came in this white, I believe a Miami sand white, something like that. It was not one of the ones that was two-tone paint job. A lot of them had a different color roof and they colored the, the, the sides and the hood with a pastel color. This one uh, was, was full white. Pretty much, uh, it went on from there. Uh, the vehicle got painted. Um, I got it back. The uh, arduous tasks of restor full restoration began, which is just a lot of time. Taking things apart, you know, the axles, uh, new springs, all new bushings, almost all new bolts on the vehicle. There was three different size wheels were on this thing when I got it, so the wheels weren't quite the right ones for the vehicle. And I uh, got to know a guy on the Willys Forum that was selling the wheels he had. Uh, he was going with larger tires, so these wouldn't work for him anymore, and I got these for a great deal. It was like $300 for the four wheels, and they're like brand new. Got the engine machine, you know, all the machine work done. And there's not a lot of guys that want to work on these flatheads anymore. So this is a six cylinder 226 uh, flathead. 
and uh, I, I was surprised. Uh, I thought that there'd be more shops that would be able to, to work on this engine, but uh, there, there weren't. Uh, so I found a guy, and uh, we, uh, uh, it, he had it for six months. And you know, I, I didn't, one of those guys that was pretty thorough with his work and you don't want to bother him too many times or it's just going to take longer. So six months later, I got the block back and reassembled the engine uh, here in the garage. Uh, pretty much what he did is we had to take the crank 10 under um, and the, the cylinders are all 30 over. But from what I've heard, you can go 60 over on these old engines uh, and be fine. This engine is actually uh, a continental engine. They make them for generators, for lift carts or lift trucks and uh, pumps. So a lot of the parts for this engine, this old flathead, are still available and you can get a lot of the parts still at Napa for, for, for this vehicle. Very, very uh, happy to find that out, that the parts were not rare and caught very expensive. Some guys have taken the body, like a pristine body like this, and, and, and it does come right up off the frame, and they put it on an S10. You know, so the S10, um, you have to do some work to in order to make it all fit, but that's a worthy project. Um, for this one, I think because it is so pristine, uh, it is such a survivor, uh, I don't think I'd do that. I would, I, this, this one, I think, needs to be kept the way it is. And I really enjoy the conversations that I have with people about this vehicle at the car shows. Uh, it, it's original, you know, almost everything's original. There are some things that aren't. Again, safety. Safety things like uh, very small tail lights on this thing, so I have LED tail lights, and uh, very they're really bright. You know, they're really really good. You can be seen. I've put in the third brake light on this, and you know, uh, disc brakes in the front, uh, seat belts, those kind of things. You know, to make it make it so that I could take my grandchildren out for a ride. My name is Jim. This is my 1961 Willys utility wagon, and that's why I'm a car guy. Jim's wagon. Uh, I was impressed the second I got there and the guy opened up his garage door and I saw how beautiful this car was. I mean, it the shine on this car was unbelievable. You, you could eat off the seats, you could eat off the carpet, you could eat off of the frame. It was like perfect. And the coolest part is I got to go for a ride with the guy and he says a couple times, it sounds like a sewing machine. It does, it sounds like a sewing machine. You, you can't hear the car run. You know, we want to film cars, we want to hear them run, we want them to hear them make a bunch of noise. This one, you got to put a stethoscope on it to, <laughs> to, to hear it, it's so quiet. But it was really a cool ride. Check this out. Um, this thing gets a lot of attention. I mean, people love it. Um, it. Very seldom do I pull up to a stoplight and someone doesn't have their window down asking me, uh, is, it, is this a new car? Some people think it's a Mitsubishi, or a, uh, it's a Mercedes. I can't believe it when I say, no, it's, it's a 62 and the grandpappy is the one you're driving. <laughs> So Mark, how was the ride with the, the Willys? Uh, it was great. You know what? We rode down the road a little ways, went to a, a park, uh, got some cool shots. Uh, his nephew came with, um, Colin, uh, who was really cool. Colin actually stepped up and grabbed one of the cameras and did some filming uh, for us. Cool. So thanks a lot, Colin. I appreciate that. And uh, we're going to be reaching out to him in the future. He was a cool guy. And uh, Jim? Nicest guy, um, really knows a lot about that car that he rebuilt, uh, restored, and um, he got it from his brother, and um, it's been in the family for a while, and I got to tell you, he did a great job, I mean, all the way down to the wood strips on the floor, it was, it's just beautiful. Yeah, the guy uh, learned how to do upholstery doing his own seats That's because right. it was going to be so much money to reupholster his uh, interior. Well, he did a good uh, job. Uh, the guy, he's a class act. And I'll tell you what, the guy's meticulous. Um, I learned about a lot about Willys that I didn't know. It runs on a generator. It doesn't have an alternator. 
Um, I thought that was pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, he ended up rebuilding the air cleaner and made it a dry, uh, it's got a dry air cleaner instead of an oil air cleaner like they used to have. Oh, Those cool. things were so messy. But uh, yeah, it's just a great little vehicle. It doesn't have a lot of horsepower, about 100 horsepower. It's uh, it's more of a rock crawler, but God knows that guy will never run a rock over with that thing. It's so oh, beautiful. Man. But no, it's a, it's a great vehicle. I love that he upgraded everything to LED lights, so it's really nice and bright because the old uh, old fashioned light bulbs are so dull, he's probably afraid of getting rear-ended. Yeah. But um, yeah, he did an amazing job. He did all of his own stainless buffing and polishing and knocked all the dents out of it. Yeah. Uh, he rewired the entire vehicle. He told me that he actually drove the vehicle out without the front fenders and the hood out on it wow. and uh, set it up where he could get it out on the road. So that was pretty cool. You don't see that every day. Yeah. He said it kind of felt like a hot rod, but it's gotta be the tallest hot rod I've ever seen in the <laughs> yeah, world. Right. But uh, I love the sliding windows on the sides. That is so cool. It's got that big wing window in the front, like uh, you know everybody used to love back in those days. Yep. Uh, that car has got beautiful lines. I love all the stamping, all the uh, all the uh, tensioner bars that were uh, pushed through when they were building and yeah. stamping the metal. Um, it's really a real classic looking vehicle. One of the things I thought was pretty cool when we went for a ride, and I think most people take it for granted these days, is the synchronized shifting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this car didn't have synchronized shifting. No. You know, you know the old saying, grind me a pound? Yeah, he actually did that a couple times, but cool. uh, yeah, you know, that's just part of the coolness of the car. It is. And then all the little sticks that were on the floor. Uh, he told me what they were all for. Uh, I can't remember half of them. Let's see if I can remember. All right, the first one was he runs through the gears. The second one, he could put the front wheels move. The second one, he could put the rear wheels move. And the fourth one, he can make it or four by four. All yeah. And they're all lined up on the floor. I mean, it, it, and it's actually pretty cool looking. Uh, so that was kind of neat too. Yeah, and what I love is he took every single part of that car apart and rebuilt it all. Yeah. The only thing he did not do was the actual engine turning, uh, but he put everything back together. He, uh, he did the rear end on his own. He did all of the, uh, the transmission work on it. Uh, he put everything back together. A pretty amazing job. And the other thing that he didn't do was the headliner. Oh, that's right. Was, However, he said he didn't like the job that the people <clears throat> did on it, that he, the company that he had do it. So he's considering on taking it down and doing it himself. Well, if he does it anything like he did the seats, I'm sure it's going to look amazing. He's a perfectionist. For he sure. really is. Yeah. And a super nice guy. So, Jim, we know you're watching. We just want to say thank you again. It was a privilege to come out and film your car. We fell in love with it the minute we saw it. Absolutely, and thank you. And I can't wait to film a future episode of After the Smoke Clears with Jim because he has another cool car. I'm not even gonna drop it on you what it is right now. You're gonna have to watch and see. Oh, come on, let's give him a hint. It starts with the letter P. And it ends in Orsh. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time watching our channel, make sure you click the subscribe button. That really helps us out. Don't click the subscribe. Pound it. Smash it. <laughs> and do us a favor. Watch all the way to the end of the video. Okay? YouTube judges us on time. So watch to the end of the video. There's something always cool at the end of the video. It's me and him. Hey guys, I don't know if you've noticed yet, but below we have a link for a Teespring store, which you can go on and buy apparel. You're gonna find t-shirts, you're gonna find hats. Uh, no hats. No hats, oh, sorry. Yeah, no you're gonna hats. be able to find baby clothes, some women's apparel. You're Coffee gonna even mugs. be able to find socks, but anything that you're looking for, you might wanna have one of these awesome After the Smoke Clear shirts. All you gotta do is go on there. It's easy to purchase. Just put your credit card number down, have one sent to your house. And not only that, a small portion of that goes to After the Smoke Clears to help us get new cameras, get new lighting, whatever, just to make the channel better for you. Absolutely. So make sure you check out the link in the description.